Betty Lou. We don't know whether she's pregnant or not. We're trying to decide whether we're going to keep her because Rusty has a hard time mating her. Betty Lou. Betty, 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 Betty Lou. But he may have finally gotten to her. We don't know. Maybe she just wasn't big enough all those times. We're just wondering. Um, if she is pregnant, she would be due the end of November, I think, or early December. But we just get off the fence, baby. I don't think the fence works. We can't figure out. Squeeze in a minute. Put her ears on that fence. Quit eating stuff up next to the fence. And I'm trying to get around to the side where I can show y'all her teats and her stomach. Is this a pregnant belly? I don't know. This would be her first time thoroughing. Oh, here comes old Bertha Sue. Bertha, you ain't missing a meal. But we can't decide whether she's pregnant or not. Maybe y'all can see them a little. But they are more developed than they have been. So we don't know. I think she sometimes I look at her and I really think she's pregnant. But you'd look at uh birth over here and she'd think she's pregnant too. These are some big hogs. They ain't no baby hogs. So I'm not sure. You itchy. Big girls. These old big girls. Good morning, y'all. I'm coming to y'all from our final sunflower patch of the season but it's a beautiful fall morning the birds are singing it feels cool it feels like october in georgia today we got a little breeze going this is a bee update for 2021 so we are wrapping up our fifth season with bees on the farm and i just wanted to give y'all an update of how the season went and since I just started my channel a few months ago, I'm going to give you some background on our whole bee adventure. So we got our first hive in 2017 and it was a top bar hive. We got a package of bees in the mail and we installed them in the top bar hive. That hive didn't make it through the winter and you should, you should learn from that to never have just one hive. In 2018, we started with three top bar hives. We had three packages of bees come in the mail and we installed them in top bar hives. One of them didn't make it a month. It absconded. We don't know what happened with it. And one of them we had in the woods and it was overtaken with small hive beetles. They did survive, but they were always a weak hive as long as they were battling the hive beetles. The other one that we had, it did do fairly well. It was starting to be more shaded during the summer because of the pecan tree. We had three hives in 2018, and of those three hives, two survived through the winter. So in 2019, we decided we were gonna try Langstroth hives because we weren't having much luck getting either of the top bar hives to produce honey. And I don't think it's that they weren't producing honey. I think it's I hadn't figured out how to manage them well. And I'm still learning because the problem with top bar hives, there aren't, in my area, there are no real mentors or anyone who does top bar hives. Mostly everyone around here does Langstroth hives. So I'm kind of on my own trying to figure it out. And you can learn from books and from online. It's great to learn all of that basic stuff. You really need someone in your area that does your kind of beekeeping because it's it's different every everywhere. I mean, even in, if someone in my area, different parts of the county, it can be different because your soil, you'd be surprised how many things affect the bees. And so your environment, you're even small down to your farm is completely different than someone else's. Anyway, that was a tangent. In 2019, we decided to add Langstroth hives. I bought a couple of boxes. We had a lot of swarms. We put swarm, we 
we caught swarms and we put them in the Langstroth hives. We had no clue what we were doing. I hadn't joined any bee groups or watched a lot of Langstroth. I read a few books, I think, but we didn't know what we were doing with the Lang hives. We, we bought a lot of bee equipment from a lady that was getting out and she had an old abandoned hive that was five mediums tall. So we got that hive too and it hadn't been inspected or messed with in, in probably a year or so. So we got all that equipment and we got those bees and that was a great learning experience there having that hive to dissect and we did some splits off of that hive but before the end of the summer that hive of absconded or died out or and I don't know if it's not because I messed with it too much but they were the meanest bees I've ever dealt with so I wasn't real sad about them leaving I guess they hadn't been maintained or bothered so they were happy and so when we started I mean we couldn't even get near those hives that's how I mean I got the most stings I've ever gotten <laughs> that year that was a mean hive but anyway I wanted to say what I learned from that big hive was maybe the bees just want to be left alone because they were thriving on neglect. So that year we got up to 10 hives between Top Bar Hives and Langstroth Hives. We thought we were booming right along. I don't think we had a lot that made it through the winter. 2020, I would call that the year of the ants. When we switched to Langstroth Hives, Hubby built us some hive stands out of just wood and his method of dealing with the ants was to just paint the, the legs with used motor oil or we tried Vaseline anything but none of it would stay on there because it would absorb into the wood or it would wash off in the rain and so it was hard to maintain and make sure there was always something on there because as soon as they could get across it the ants were in the hive so we battled ants with that system the whole season and i believe we lost a lot of bees to ant intrusion they i've read things that say ants don't bother bees uh these ants do they're not fire ants they're i think they're argentine ants and they just go in and i think they're taking all the nectar and honey. they make them starve to death i think they take all their food we caught several swarms that year as well we maintained eight hives pretty much the whole season we thought we were doing pretty good but by fall we were down to two sad looking hives because of the ant problem i mean it was crazy at times we had one top bar hive and one Langstroth hive going into the winter. That's all we had. And they weren't looking super strong. We worked on some new ant deterrent measures for 2021. At the start of 2021, this year in the spring, those two hives that were weak and didn't look well, they did make it through the winter and they started building up really quickly and that was really cool. But I also wanted to add some more diversity to my bee yard. We got two nukes that were five frame deeps and we made two Langstroth hives with those. This year, what we also did different was we moved all of our bees to one bee yard instead of having them spread out all across the farm. But the, the, the bees, we realized, are happier being in one yard. It's easier to maintain them. It's easier to share resources between them. So it's, it's much better to keep them in all in one area than to spread them out all around. It's easier to work them all in one area and keep an eye on what's going on with each hive when they're all in one area. I feel like that the bees have a little community. They even seemed happier being all in one area because they could all communicate. They've been, ha my bees have been happier this year in their little bee yard community than I have seen them the whole time we've been keeping bees. So I think that was a good thing to do this year. This has been our best bee stewarding year ever. I feel like I've done a good job managing them, not over managing them, but keeping track of what they've got going on, keeping their combs straight. I made two splits off of that little top bar hive that I didn't think was gonna make it. And all of those, both of those splits have done well and the original are all booming and I'm feeling really confident about them going into the winter. I feel good about them. The overwintered Langstroth hive, that hive has done really well. We harvested four frames of honey from that hive. Sometimes I worry that maybe I should have only taken two frames because they don't have much food now upon my inspections. So I'm feeding, 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 but I always feel guilty taking their honey. I mean, I don't know how much they want to share with me. I, I'm not into beekeeping just to reap all the honey. <laughs> I want to keep my bees because they keep everything growing and amazing around here. I mean, we have never had so much life on this farm until we started having bees. I just think of my honey as a blessing. I don't keep bees for honey. I keep them mostly for pollinators, for the life that they bring around here. The two new hives that we got, the, the nukes, I can't, they, it was really strange because one of them really started out well. It, exploded it was booming i think i had i think i had to add a, another box now i did struggle with getting them to build straight comb because i 
use foundationless frames. I did have to work a lot and probably messed up a lot in their hive trying to get them to build straight comb. But they finally got the, the gist of things and they finally got going. But that one hive was really booming, really doing great, really bringing in a lot of resources, had a lot of honey. The other hive, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the queen was just not a good queen. I mean, that happens. She had a spotty brood pattern from the beginning. I figured they would build them, they would hatch them maybe a new queen and it would get better. So I just kind of left them alone, but they were bringing in a lot of resources. They had a lot of honey and stuff. And so I was just kept praying they were gonna get better. But I inspected them last week and they still have a spotty brood pattern. So I don't know what's up with that, but they do have a lot of resources. They have a lot of honey, capped honey. So that's good. I'm gonna leave that with them. And there's a lot of bees in there. But the, the brood pattern, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I'm just going to cross my fingers with that hive and just kind of leave it be and hope it's going to make it through the winter. But the one that was booming, I did not mess with them much through August because I was sick. And the last time I had looked, it was still doing great. And I did do some manipulation. Um, they had moved up from there in the deep and they had moved up to the medium and that's where their brood nest was. There was no brood in the, so I did do a flip a -roo there trying to get them to keep moving up. So I don't know if I manipulated them too much and they didn't like that. But when I came out at the end of August, beginning of September, there were no bees in that hive. And I was like, what in the world? And there, all the resources had been robbed out. The wax moths had started in, but I was able to save a whole box of comb. I took that box of comb and I'm keeping it in the freezer through the winter. I hope those other two Langstroth hives that are left are gonna make it through the winter and that's gonna give them a jump start for getting honey and nectar in the spring. We had six hives this summer. We didn't have a lot of, there weren't a lot of swarms this year. We had one swarm and it didn't stay around long enough for us to capture it. What are y'all doing? Y'all have got to be the nosiest birds. Nosy turkeys. This is two colonies in this one top bar hive. They've got a divider in the middle. Now on this side, this side that's really busy, I am just quite surprised at how they have grown because I really didn't think that was my first split of the year and I really didn't think it was going to make it. It's just really struggled for a long time, but it is absolutely booming right now. I mean, I've almost contemplated getting them out and giving them their own hive, but going through the winter, you don't want them to expand a lot because you don't want them to have a lot of empty comb that they've got to guard because they're gonna be in cluster most of the cold weather. I'm trying to just maintain them where they're at, but I'm really kind of worried they might try to swarm, and that would be bad if they try to swarm. So I'm still torn on whether I'm going to put them into another hive and just close them down. But they have been the busiest I've ever seen them this past week. I do plan in the spring to separate these two colonies into their own top bar hives, and hopefully, I've never had any of my colonies fill up one of these top bar hives. They seem to like these small. They like to be, I don't know if it's this area. I'm, st I'm still, like I say, I am on my fifth season of top bar hives and I still haven't gotten them figured out, but they seem to do better in a smaller top bar hive than in these really long top bar hives. That is one thing, I, I haven't had any colony fill up an entire top bar hive. Now, I don't know if that's the bees that are doing better or if I still have not figured out a good management style, but I have better luck when they stay in a small space. I had those feeders inside of the hives, you know, to prevent robbing, but that was taking up space in there and they needed the space to expand some. I mean, maybe that made them feel less crowded and they won't swarm, I don't know.
the lessons I've learned from this bee season of 2021. The number one lesson, do not write in your bee journal with erasable ink. I got these erasable ink pens this year and I was so excited about them for using them in my calendar. But they do not work well if you're gonna keep a journal out here in the bee yard because apparently in the heat, the erasable ink will turn invisible. <laughs> And so I got very discouraged because I took a month's worth of notes and they just all disappeared. So that's the number one lesson is don't write in your journal with erasable ink. The number two lesson is that bees like to be in their own yard all together. They are happier. They like their own community. I believe all of the colonies um, were working together. This was especially apparent during the breeding season, the mating season, because the drones were like everywhere. I think they were going from hive to hive. Um, lesson number three, feed your bees consistently. I go back and forth about whether they need to be fed during the nectar flow, but I think my conclusion is feed them, and if they are drinking it, keep feeding them. When they stop drinking, when they stop taking so much, then stop feeding them. But always offer because it's hard to keep up with when exactly the nectar flow stops because they are going to go through a dearth in the summer when there's not as much nectar to gather. So that is a lesson for me is I need to make sure I'm feeding consistently all the way through the summer. My fourth lesson learned is that our new ant deterrent system is working and I'll give you all a closer view of that in a minute. What we wound up doing was hubby made me some new stands for my beehives and we wound up putting all of our beehives on these stands even the top bar hives we've done a lot better with our ant problem this year now our ant deterrent system pvc pipe legs this is the flashing that he made to keep the bees from falling into the things you've got to keep the spider webs from the inside of this because the spiders will go up in there and build a web and the ants will cross that spider web and also you have to keep this from touching that because anywhere they can touch the, the ants will get up in this hive so this has worked though this season we have been very impressed with our little deterrent system here but it's just pvc legs and coffee cans full of water and oil and this little flashing cover to keep the bees from falling in there and dying I think he's gonna build us some more of these stands. Number five lesson learned this year has been to do consistent checks. I, I really did stay on top of my bees this year. And when you're doing those checks, make sure that your bees, your bee girls have something to keep them busy. Make sure they're staying busy. If they look like they're filling out the area that you've given them, stick in some more empty frames and let them start getting busy building that. It's good to move things around between the hives. Don't, don't get crazy, but I, I did a lot better managing and making sure they stayed busy all summer. And I think that's kept them happy. And that's why we probably haven't had a lot of swarms. You don't ideally want to have a lot of swarms because you are losing two thirds of your bees when that happens. But if you can catch that swarm, you know, that's just another, that's the way they reproduce. And that's another hive you'll get. Ideally, you want to manage it where you prevent them from swarming and you split it yourself. My number six lesson learned this year is to keep good bee notes. And I did start out the year taking very good notes, but of course they all turned invisible. But I've, I've, I've kept the best notes probably this year than I have in the whole time we've been keeping bees and plus making these videos is helping me or helping me keep up with what's happening in the hives it's good to have this history of your hives through your hives through the season and your hives through the years take good notes that's a great lesson and my number seven lesson for 2021 is don't give up it is very hard when you lose hives it's very sad it hurts my heart when i lose a hive but and and, and i'll do i want to quit i want to say i don't know what i'm doing i've been doing this now for five seasons and i still feel like lots of times i don't know what i'm doing but i love bees and i don't think i can ever have a life without bees again so don't give up just because you lose a hive because in this day and age of pesticides and herbicides and all the parasites that the bees fight, you're gonna lose hives. There's just, there's not a lot that you can do. You, you just make them, try to keep them happy and healthy and busy. 
there are so many outside factors that you can't control. Don't blame yourself when you lose a hive. Don't give up. Keep trying. We got to keep trying for the bees because they bring so much life to this farm and I can't imagine this farm without them. I'm always going to have bees on this farm, always. And I, I really hope that I can get some of my grandbabies interested in them and, and they'll be our, our next beekeepers. That will be an awesome thing to be able to teach them. So what are our plans for next year? I'm trying, my plans so far for next year are to maintain the five hives that we have. And I'm gonna do that by feed, feed, feeding all through the winter. We want to expand the footprint of our bee yard here because we need to have a bigger weed barrier area so that we can mow around here without being attacked by the bees. I'm wanting to add more top bar hives. I found a design, it's called a lay-ins hive, and there's some designs for it online. I'll leave a link in the description below. But he has a horizontal hive that's a cross between a top bar hive and a Langstroth hive because the top bars have frames. These lay-ins hives are also horizontal. Now there's argument in the bee community that bees don't like to move horizontally, but I don't think I agree with that. I don't think that's the problem. I like my horizontal hives better than the Langstroth hives still because they are easier to manage, especially if you aren't really strong and can't pick up those big boxes for the Langstroth hives because a top bar hive, you're only pulling out one frame at a time. So it's very easy on your body. I also think it's very easy on the bees. The bees are not disrupted as much when you're moving out one frame at a time because you're not taking it out. You're just move, picking it up, looking at it, putting it back down. So there's not as much interruption to the bees day. And I don't find that they're as angry when I work them. The Langstroth hives are always very angry because I am really busting into them when I inspect. That's it for our beekeeping season of 2021. But I'm going to go get them some food now and get their feeders filled up and get them happy. Thank y'all for joining me on this beekeeping update video and I hope you'll have a great day and have a blessed day. stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are what makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of i wonder Sometimes hides behind the clouds Maybe it's just like me A little bit scared of heights Why does the rain always keep on pouring down When it's gray outside It really makes me wonder Darn.